you god bless you saints god bless you we are live on prophetic insight amen prophetic insight uh my name is apostle moses ranking i am from london england and i am the senior pastor 
Amen. Senior Prophet of Sword of the Spirit International P Prophetic uh, Ministries here in London, England. And I am um, overseer of the CS House Apostolic Prophetic Network, where we offer mentoring um, and covering and accountability for different ministries and ministers. Amen. And I'm glad to be on the HOD gospel radio show platform amen so uh if you can if you're seeing this message live if you're seeing this message on the replay i encourage you please to just share to just send it amen to just uh connect with somebody i'm in i'm inviting you in my home or in my home here just some um, you know just uh just here feeling um getting ready to share with you the gospel getting ready to share with you the word of god Amen. So uh, it's a new platform for us. So a lot of people are, you know, brand new to this platform that we're on. And uh, we really want to be able to connect with a lot of people on this platform, on this, uh, on this, on this, uh, uh, on this station. So I want to give, I want to thank HOD Gospel Network. That's based in uh, Benin, Nigeria, for allowing me to uh, be a part of this network. Allowing me to uh, be a part of this uh, um, this platform, giving me the opportunity to minister on here. I want to thank uh, Minister Danielle for giving me the opportunity, inviting me to be a part here. And I'm really excited about releasing prophetic insight and prophetic revelation into your life. Say amen. So um, I'm not sure of the audience we have here, whether we have a mixed audience. Like I said, our program is new. It's, it's new here. So I will be here from 9 till 10 o'clock. Amen. So every Saturday. So you can put that in your diary. For those of you catching on the replay, like I said, a lot of people will be new to this platform. Maybe you haven't seen this platform before, but this is where we're at. Amen. So I've been invited here every Saturday to share the prophetic revelation and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So... Uh, we're going to go right into what I feel, you know, we're going to talk about tonight. And the Lord talked, said to me about the word. I heard the, I heard the word development, development, development. And um, in the prophetic, amen, hallelujah, in the prophetic ministry, in the prophetic uh, um, environment, it's all about transformation, amen. God will never keep a prophet the same. Then when you leave a prophet and you go back to a prophet, you're always going to find some sort of transformation, amen, because God is continually trying to update and trying to re uh, renovate the heart of the prophet. You know, you see the heart of the prophet is the most important part the pro that God owns, amen. So when God owns your heart, he owns you. You see, when the Bible says uh, where, uh, where a man's treasures is, his heart will be also. So wherever you find treasure, that's where your heart is located. So what God does to prophets, he takes their treasure and put their treasure in him. That's why many prophets have to live circumspect lives. They have to live lives of cons consecrated. They have to live lives where they've gone through hardships or difficulties because God is trying to pull your heart from yourself, pull your heart from your strength, Pull your heart from your mind, from your, from your self-efforts and make sure that your heart is rooted and grounded in him. He wants to make sure that your heart is after him. You see, David did many things and many mistakes, but his heart was always after him. You see, we got to be people that our heart is after him. He doesn't just want your head. He wants your heart. He doesn't want just want your hands. He wants your heart. He just doesn't want your feet. He wants your heart. He wants you to make sure that you have a heart that reflects him. Now, what is in the heart? The the Bible says inside the heart is the mechanism that pumps blood, the blood around the body. Now, blood is the is the is the life force that allows your body to move. If your heart does not pump properly, if your heart does not work, you can't live, you can't survive. And that's the same thing. God is saying that if your heart is not right with my people, if my heart is not right with my people, then I will not be able to live and thrive the way I want to thrive. I won't be able to survive in humanity. I need people who desire to have a clean heart before me. Hallelujah. Come on. I know I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Praise God. Greetings, Handy Andy. Amen. Bless you. See, God wants people who want to have the right heart. Amen. Praise God. You see, we're not looking at your words. We're looking at your heart. We're not looking at your appearance. We're looking at your heart. We're not looking at your 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 
your stature were looking at your heart. The Bible says when Samuel wanted to anoint a king in Jesse's house, he was confused by the stature. He was confused by the appearance. He was confused by the position. But you see, God God spoke to him and said, listen, let me clear up your clarity, Samuel. When I anoint people, I don't anoint stature, position, and appearance. I anoint the heart. I like people that have a right heart. I like people that have a right spirit. I like people that have a right identity have a right flow and a right revelation of who i am praise god you see you get the lord you get the right heart when you connect with god's heart hallelujah when you learn how to humble and connect to god's heart that's when you get the right heart for you amen you see a lot of people heart they're having heart issues or heart trouble amen because their heart is not being connected to the king's heart and when it's connected to the king's heart that's when it starts to beat like he beats it starts to be it starts to bleed like he bleeds amen there's something wrong when things that trouble god don't trouble you there's something wrong when things that get god upset don't get you upset there's something it wrong when God is grieved and you are happy. Amen. You see, we need to get into the prophetic sync of rhythms of God when we start feeling his moods and his emotions. Amen. That's why some prophets can be seen, can be, can be very, can be seen very moody or some very temperamental because they're often in tune with the king's heart. Amen. They're looking at something not through the lenses of humanity, but the lenses of divinity and they're seeing the heart. Come on. We need people that see the heart. We need people that see past the appearance. We need people that see past the opportunity. We need people who are in tune and in rhythm with the heartbeat of God. Amen. Tell somebody, write somebody, share this to somebody. Write development, 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 development. Amen. You see what God is doing. He's developing us through a strategic process called time into the place where he wants us to be in his heart. So when we get into his heart, we get into his vision. I can't see clearly what you want me to see until I see the heart behind your vision. Amen. You see, that's what we've got to look to. We've got to work towards seeing is seeing uh, seeing through his eyes, seeing through his lens, seeing through his understanding. You see, what happens, we have cultural understanding. We have people's understandings. We have people's opinions. We have people's mindsets. We have all the things and the words and the logos that comes from men. But what about God? We have all the instructions that come from men. But what about God? We have all the things that are that are in tune or or the rhythms and the and the intelligence of men. But what about God? You see, we get in trouble when we go by our own understanding we need God's understanding we get in trouble when we go by our own revelation we need God's revelation we get in trouble when we go by our own thinking we need God's thinking Amen. You see, he's trying to continually develop you into a position where you are beating and looking and talking and walking like he walks Amen. If it ain't about his heart it ain't him if it isn't from his heart it ain't him praise God you know, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I know what's in your heart by the words you carry out. Amen. I know the what's in your mind. by I know what's in your spirit by the words that are being released about you. Amen. I know what you're spewing out. I know if it's life or death. Praise God. I know if it's law or spirit. I know if it's true or false. Amen. Because when I begin to get in tune with his heart, I can see what's coming out of your mouth. I can see the truth. They match. And if they don't match, I don't want it because it's not of the heart of God. You see, we've got people that preach his head, but they don't preach his heart. Amen. When I say preach his head, they preach the mind of Christ. They preach the scripture of Christ. Amen. But you see everything behind it for it to work. It has a heartbeat. Amen. We got to you see that we got to have prophetic revelation that gives us insight into what is the motive of God for doing something. What is the reality of God to, for doing something? What is this why does god allow certain things to happen praise god amen you see the bible talks about um i'm gonna go from first kings probably 11 today first kings 11 i want to read something for read something to you amen hallelujah 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 i'm not gonna be long on here today i'm not gonna be long on here today amen hallelujah first kings 11 hallelujah hallelujah you can go there. We're going to go there very, 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 very quickly. Amen. I have an hour on here. I have an hour on here. Amen. Amen. Sorry, 2 Kings 11. What am I doing? 
Second Kings 11. Second Kings 11. Sorry. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sorry, I'm I'm going there. Just keep on sharing this if you can. Amen. We're going to connect onto there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me just make sure it is in the right place. Amen. While I'm doing this, getting the scripture ready, I want you to share this with somebody. Amen. We're talking about development today. Development. 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 Hallelujah. Development. Prophetic development. Hallelujah. First Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm right. First Kings. <laughs> Sorry. Just checked it. First Kings 13. Amen. First Kings 13. We're going to go right back to there. First Kings 13. I'm so sorry. Hallelujah. I've got you now. Amen. It slipped my mind for a second. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible said this. Amen. Praise God. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born into the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee be offered the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt up unto thee. And, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, this is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall rent and the ashes be, shall be poured out. And we're going to go all the way down. Amen. And uh, we're going to keep reading, actually. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so he could not pull it against him. Then the altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of God. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord my God, and pray for me, that my hand be restored again again praise God and it says to him and the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored restored him again and his face became as it was before so the Bible says from these one two chapters from verses one to six that there was a performance of the Lord amen the Bible says that the the man of God came the young prophet came and he and uh, the, the the king's hand when he put it down it became withered amen and then they spoke the word of God and then the Bible says that the king's hand became open Open. Amen. Listen, things happen when you speak the word of God from the heart of God. Amen. You see, when we know the heart of God for healing, we have confidence in speaking the word. The young prophet was it was it was able to speak the word because he heard a word. Amen. Listen, whatever we hear, we're able to speak. Amen. Listen, when I hear him, when I learn how to put myself into tune with the heart and the mind of God, I start hearing the heart of God and I start speaking forth the mind of God. Amen. The heart of God. Amen. You see, some of us, we got to understand that God is expecting us not just to speak his words, to speak his heart. Amen. So when he spoke the word of God, there was an immediate performance because God wanted to win the heart of the king. Amen. You see, God is always looking for the heart of a nation. He's always looking for a heart of a people. He's always looking for the heart of, of, a, of a congregation that know him, that love him, that honor him. Amen. He said, don't, don't just give me your clothes. Don't just render your garments. Give me your heart. Don't just give me the things that you, which you think are important. Render your heart. Don't just give me the things which you think are prevalent. Give me your heart. Praise God. And the Bible says, and the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself. I will give thee a ward. So the man of God released the miracle. Now the king is saying, to him come home with me and i give you a reward amen praise god the man of god in this is it refers to the prophet he's saying come home with me i'll give the reward amen when you carry god's heart amen not only do you carry his heart but you carry his precise instructions for living 
Amen. You know his heart towards yourself and you know the tight constraints you must live in. You see, every believer must know their own personal walk with God. You must know and understand your own personal salvation. You must know the things that are applicable to you that you can do that and that, that you and things that you can't do. The Bible says about Samson. Samson had a specific instruction. He, the Bible says he was a Nazarite from when he was born and the strength remained in Samson as long as he did didn't cut his hair. Some of us are lacking strength because we're doing the things God specifically told us not to do. Some of us are lacking strength because we're doing the things God specifically spoke to us not to do. It's not about the corporate revelation. God loves you so much. He's going to give you a heart to heart personal revelation. When we have a heart to heart, it's personal. When we have a heart to heart, it's, 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 it's intimate. When we have a heart to heart, it's relational. That's why God wants to know and live in your heart because he wants to give you personal revelation that's prevalent and important to you amen see some people don't understand the importance of being close and intimate when I'm close and intimate I get to know the person in a deeper way you see when I'm when I don't have an intimate relationship when I don't have a close relationship I do not know the motives I do not know the heartbeat I can see the actions but I can't see the heart I can see the performance but I can't see the heart I can see the method but I can't see the heart God is saying to this man of God wait a minute if this man if anybody offers you anything if the king offers you anything watch what happens he begins to save the heart of God towards him watch this and the man of God said unto the king if you thou will give me half thine house I will not go with thee neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place for so it was charged me by the word of the Lord saying eat no bread uh, eat no bread nor water nor drink no water nor turn again to the same way you came Praise God. So he says, wait a minute. I have a specific instruction that's relevant to my salvation. I have a specific instruction. God told me to come here because the miracle is going to happen to you. I heard God's heart concerning you, but I've also heard God's heart concerning me. You see, some people are tempted to leave the heart of God for the things of the world. Amen. You see, this man of God was offered something by a king. He was offered something by an important person. He was offered somebody, something by someone who was influential, who had money. And see, sometimes money, things want to buy your heart. It wants to buy your service. The king was trying to offer him something. The king was trying to give him something. You see, you want to learn how to not be tempted by things and by people and by money and by platforms if you carry the heart of God. You see, sometimes things in this earth, temptations in this earth will come to bring you out of the heart of God. It will bring you into the hand of God and it will allow you to start enjoying the pleasures of things which God says he doesn't want you to have. You see, the revelation may be why God said to this young man, don't take nothing from the king because I don't want to corrupt your heart. You see, when we take gifts from, from uh, and the gifts can, can steal our hearts, the gifts can steal our minds, the gifts can steal our, steal our joy because we start putting our treasure in the gifts instead of the heart of God. Come on, somebody better hear me. You see, sometimes when we kind of get ourselves out of order with God, it's not because we've left, God has left us, sorry. It's because we've left God. We've gone after other gods. We've gone after other treasures. We get gone after other things. And when you go after other things, what happens? You take your heart with you and you give it to other masters. You give it to other people. You give it to other gods. Amen. And God has a problem because he says, I'm a jealous God. I will have none other before me. If I made you, I formed you, ordained you. And I took you from the mother's womb as a prophet unto the nations. You're going to stay mine until you come back to me. I'm not going to share you with anybody. I'm not going to share you with anyone. I'm not going to be your side chick. I'm not going to be your bit on the side. I'm not going to be the one that you look at and you come to on the, on the weekends after you spend a week with the other gods. God says in this lifetime which you live, I must be first and I must have first place in your life. Otherwise, I don't want you. Amen. He says this, I would love it if you're hot and I would love it if you're cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'm screwing you out of my mouth. Hallelujah. <coughs> I'm spewing you out of your mouth. 
Praise God. And you see, the part of our development process is getting our heart loyal with his heart. God says, I know why I'm not giving you the king's food. I know why I'm not giving you the money now. I know why I'm not giving you the blessings now. I know why I'm not opening doors, which are great doors for you now. I know why I've kept you in secret. I know why I've hid you. I've hid you. I know why you're not as popular as somebody else. I know what it will do to you. I know how it will puff up your heart. I know how it will puff up your spirit. I know what it will bring into you so you got to trust me that i know what the right thing is for your heart come on hallelujah praise god so the bible says that when he began to have the this get began to have this word praise god he was loyal to the heart of god he was loyal to the word of God. He was loyal to the spirit of God. Amen. You see, all of us, when we start off in our walk with God, there is a loyalty and a sincerity men and women have when they walk with God. Praise God. At the beginning, you're very loyal. At the beginning, you're very faithful. At the beginning, you're very sacrificial. Praise God. But you see, what happens when you get stuff? What happens when you get platforms? You see, the test is not the failure. The test is actually the blessing. Part of your development is handling the blessing. Part of your development is handling the money. Part of your development is handling the, handling the increase. Increase can be more deceptive than decrease. Come on, somebody better hear me. Amen increase can be more deceptive than decrease when you're decreased when you're when you when you have lack when you're suffering a hard season it's easy to go before the throne it's easy to get your heart right with god it's easy to get yourself right with god but the moment now when you get a increase and you get a raise suddenly we can't see you at the prayer meetings suddenly we can't see you at the church meetings suddenly we don't hear from you we don't know where you've gone we don't know where you've been because your heart has been lifted up because of pride see this is what god understands he understands everything that comes out of you will come out from where your heart is amen everything that is meant to come out of your destiny will come out where your heart is everything that is meant to promote you or demote you will be found where your heart is amen he goes i put up i put down sorry the uh, i put up the humble and i put down the proud because the proud has taken his heart from me and has chosen to run with it itself praise god Come on, come on, come on. I'm preaching better than your amen and amen. Praise God. There's a word of the Lord here. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. Hallelujah. I'm feeling the anointing. Hallelujah. So you see, the first test comes. The first test came to the young man, the young prophet. Amen. And the, first, the test wasn't that, that could he listen to the word of God and do the miracle. The test was, would he give away the word which God put in his heart? Would he give away the instruction in his heart? Some of us were being seduced by some things we're being tempted by some things we're being tempted by some people we're being tempted by some say, some, some some situations and then you see we've got to be able to recognize the tempter jesus the bible said that the spirit not the devil the spirit not the enemy praise god the spirit led jesus up into the wilderness for 40 days and as it led him up to the wilderness as it led him up to his uh, led him up to the devil the bible said the spirit led him up to be tempted to see where he was in his development praise god you see the tempter will come the enemy will come not when you have have attained but as you are attaining as you are going up the offer to break the process will come during your development praise god you see it's during your development stages during a child's development stages in the womb is when the bones are being formed if vital organs are being formed things that are vital to the child's later life are being formed in the belly in the womb during its development in the womb that's why it's a time for it to be very sensitive and it doesn't need to be disrupted if it gets disrupted if it gets uh, uh get being being subdued to abnormal procedure or, or an abnormal normal thing happens to it the child can come out with a deformity praise god and so what happened at that development time can cause a child to have a development uh, have an infor infir infirmity infirmity sorry during his whole life amen god is saying that he doesn't want you to be in have a disability
ability, have an uh, have a be have an iniquity, have something something to deform you. Sorry, while you are in this place, Amen. That will cause your whole ministry to act deformed. That will cause your whole ministry to act polluted. You see, it's during this time you got to learn how to be humble, how to pray, how to give us, how to give, how to worship, how to give something for nothing. God enjoys people that allow Him to have their heart during their development season. Praise God. There's lots of things fighting for your heart during your development season. Knowledge is fighting for your heart. Amen. You see, when we get knowledge, more information, more revelation, it begins to fight for our heart. It begins to come from our head into our heart. And so you start trusting on your knowledge. You start trusting on your own understanding. You start trusting on your own wisdom. Instead of letting your heart be led by God, it's now led by knowledge. Knowledge will come for your heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. People will come to your heart. Amen. You see, people will come and then puff you up. People will talk you up. People will praise you up. People will, people will push you up. Up, amen. You gotta be careful of the yes men in your life that have seen a star upon you. You see, the Bible just said that said that Herod saw the star, and when Herod saw the star, he said to them, he said to the wise men, "Can I also come and worship? Can I also come and pay homage?" But they discern. Wait a minute. He hasn't seen the star. He's seen the advantage. He hasn't really seen the star. He's seen how he's seen the opportunity. He wants to do something. Thank goodness for discernment. Praise God. And he began to the wise men began to discern and say, "Wait a minute." We can't tell him where the star is being. We can't, we can't, we can't give him this information because whatever he's trying to do, he's trying to now catch Jesus in his development stage. He's trying to catch Jesus in his development path. You see, you gotta be careful of those who want to snatch you out of your development. People that want to puff you up and pull you out of your development. People that know you're on the right path. You're serving the right church. You're serving the right man of God. You're humbling yourself under the right people, and they want to tell you, "Come here. I can make you higher. I can offer you something." it now i can bless you now you got to be careful of the ones who don't let you finish your process and offer you the treasure now we've got preachers who pull out children praise god out of their development so that they can come and develop their ministries amen and that child does not ever get up developed that does, that does never ends up to be developed when somebody comes in and to a home and takes a child without the consent of the parents or the uh, not, not, not even the child giving consent, the parents, when a child is underage, when a child is still in development, when a child is, doesn't have any, is still under his parents' rule, when a, someone comes in to a church and takes a child, we don't call it taking, we don't call it the spirit leading them out, we don't call them God moving on, we call it kidnapping, amen? There's too much kidnapping happening in the body of Christ. There's too much sheep stealing happening in the body of Christ. There's too much people who are looking to snatch people in development, snatch people in their in their ignorance, snatch people in their in their low season and bringing them out of one place and bringing them to another place saying that you're going to be bigger and better but you ain't got no more root. When someone takes you out of one zone we are meant to be what they do that is called uprooting. Amen. It's called uprooting. Amen. Praise God. You see, the enemy will always try to uproot you in your development phase. Amen. He will, you see, the moment, even when you take a plant out of its natural habitat and you pull it up and you try to put it in another, in another ground, when you try to put it in another ground, you see, that plant will still wither away and die because the nutrients it needed was not in the plant, it was in the soil. Hallelujah. You see, you don't let nobody uproot you from where God's planted you. Don't let nobody take you out of where God put you. Don't let no, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Don't let nobody seduce you out of your calling, your ministry no prophets greater than your prophet no apostles greater than your apostle no pastors greater than your pastor we need to see some loyalty and we need to see you got a loyal heart we need to see that you got a right spirit because god says that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for the right heart you see let me tell you something increase comes to people with a good heart favor comes to people with a good heart amen praise god the bible says resist the devil i know the heart of a devil when i resist him Amen. I know the heart of Satan when I can be, when I resist him. When I resist the devil, the Bible says he flees. Amen. You see, when you resist a kidnapper, when you resist uh, somebody, uh, uh, somebody an uprooter, when you resist somebody who has come to 
stop you and halt you in your development season what happens you realize the relationship ends or comes to, has to come to another route because what the enemy has done the enemy was always trying to come with his agenda and when you resist his agenda he has no need for the relationship Praise God. This man of God didn't realize it, but he was not sent to do the miracle. He was sent to resist. Praise God. Some of you don't understand that God is testing you and allow you to be tested by your resistance. You got to resist some temptations. You got to resist some prophetic people. You got to resist some fake apostles. You got to resist some fake pastors. You got to resist some fake friends. You got to resist some people. They're trying to get you in your development. They're trying to get you to abort your vision. They're trying to get you to abort your dream. I can't abort my dream. I can't abort my vision. God has sent this to me. I can't give it to you. You can't take it from me. I'm called by the God, the Lord. I know the Lord of my Father. His heart is for me to continue. I'm not going to submit to false authority. I know who my God is and the sheep shall know the, she the shepherd's voice. Shakarabasaka. You see, this is what happened. He could discern the voice of the king and say, wait a minute, the king couldn't, can't talk to me and get me to lose my development, can't get me to be uprooted. Amen. But when it came now to the prophet, the Bible says this in verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and the words we had spoken unto the king, then they told also to their father. Praise God. And their father said unto him, what way did he go? Amen. So the old prophet says, wait a minute, I heard, wait a minute, he's doing miracles. He's doing signs and wonders. He did that for the king. His arm went in and arm went out. The arm was, the arm was le leprous. Then the arm was, what, what kind of miracle worker is this? Praise God. We need to go and find out where this guy's going. Amen. You see, part of your development process is learning how to handle the fan base. Part of your development process is learning how to handle the people who are now going to be your friends because they've seen something. They didn't want to know you in the old season. They wasn't checking you in the old season. They wasn't on your belly in the old season. But suddenly you become something. Suddenly you can't be in your development, you become someone. So now they're asking, which way did he go? Which way did she go? Which way did she, where does she live? Which church? does she go to where who is her who where, which, who is her covering we need to find out more information because we notice the favor of god is upon her life you gotta be you gotta be weary of people who notice your favor rather than your person people are more interested in your favor than your person people are more interested in your work your gifting than your person amen listen i come with the gifting in fact i am the gift you can't love me more you can't love my what i can give more than what i can get what i what you can whether who i am praise god you want to learn how to love me and what I can give, amen. You can't you see the Bible says there's people called opportunists, there's people called users, there's people called abusers, amen. And you gotta be careful about that wolf in sheep's clothing, amen. They're gonna come to you one way, amen. But the Bible says they're ravenous wolves, they come to devour, they come to take, they come to steal, kill, and destroy. Huh? But you see, when you got the Holy Ghost and you know the heart of God, you begin to realize, wait a minute, I know God's heart, amen. So I can see your heart, I know God's heart, so I can feel your heart, I know God's God's heart so I can catch your heart. I know what God is like so I can see what you're like. You see, I spent time with God. That's why it's good to be intimate with God because when someone else tries to get intimate with you, I can feel it's not God. I can sense it's not God. It doesn't feel the touch. It doesn't, the, 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 the hand, the touch is not the same. Amen. The, the, the pat is not the same. The voice is not the same. It may sound similar, but it's not the same. It may look similar, but it's not the same. I need somebody. I need something that reminds me that it is that what God that I'm serving. We've got to be careful of things that sound similar but not the same. Amen. The prophet now comes and he says, listen this, watch this. It's coming down now. And he said to his son, saddle me the ass. Amen. Get the horse for me. I'm going to chase after this guy. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon and went after the man of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What should he say this? What did he say? And found him sitting under an oak. Amen. And he said to him, are you thou the man of God that came from Judah? Aren't you the one that came from Judah? Aren't you the one that did that miracle? Amen. Praise God. See, some people, they know who you are. 
Amen. But they still ask you to confirm who you are. Amen. You see, some people they understand what they are, but they like to set you up. Amen. They'll they'll, they'll give you with they'll, they'll try to get you with false flattery, false words. They'll try to get you with false agendas. Amen. Listen, you rode your horse after me. You know who I am. Praise God. Don't ask me who I am. You know who I am. Praise God. Now watch this. Amen. The Bible says in 15. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come home with me and eat bread. Amen. And he said, I may not eat, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. Amen. You see, the Bible says that he responded with the word that God put in his heart. Amen. The king tried to give him, tried to tempt him, to seduce him. Amen. The king tried to give him great things. He said no. The prophet now comes with the same temptation. You see, when Jesus was on, came down from the wilderness, tempted on the spirit, the enemy tempted him once, tried to get him. The enemy tempted him twice, tried to get him. Amen. The en enemy tempted him three times. And it's, it was Jesus' responsibility then to rebuke Satan. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. You see, some people, we got to learn how to that they, how the enemy works he won't just try you once sometimes he won't just try you twice sometimes he'll keep trying back We're gonna, he's going to try to get you try to say something about you then come back try to do something to you then come back you see so you got some of you got you got some old boyfriends you got some old girlfriends after you gave them the sack they're trying to come back you they cheated on you before but they're trying to come back they said all kind of words about your life but they're trying to come back they went with your best friend but they're trying to come back you need to kill him with the no you need to sack him with the no amen you need to learn that you need to Say, devil, no way. There's no way back for you in my life. You see, some habits will try to come back. Some, some de demonic as um um things that are being in our life that we kicked out will try to come back. Smoking will come, try to come back. Drinking will try to come back. Lying will try to come back. Stealing will try to come back. The enemy is always trying to bring you back to the old man. Hallelujah. But listen, Satan, I rebuke you, Satan. I cancel you, Satan. The, the, the enemy is under my feet. Hallelujah. Because whatever the who the Lord makes a new creation, cre creation, who the Lord makes new cannot go back. Amen. I can't go back to the old man. I can't go back to the old seed. I'm no longer the old man. I'm no longer the old seed. I'm now born again out of incorruptible seed. Amen. Praise God. I am a new creation. Amen. I am a chosen generation. Amen. And I can't go back to the old thing. Now the Bible says this. Amen. That he resisted the king. He resisted the prophet. Amen. And then the Bible says this. For 17. For it was said to him by the word of the Lord, that she eat no bread, no water, now turn back again by the word that came. I'm coming down very quickly now. And he said to him, I am the prophet as all thou art also. And the an angel spake unto me by the word of God, saying, Bring him back unto the, the wine, bring, the, bring thee back to the, thy house, amen. And they may eat bread and drink water. But the Bible says that he lied to him, amen. So I can get you, I can't seduce you in the flesh. So I'm going to take it now to the supernatural. Praise God. When the enemy can't get you but temptation of the flesh, he'll try to get you now in the plane, the spirit supernatural plane which you which which you which God operates in to try to seduce you out of your destiny. Amen. They'll try to say God said. Amen. When I can't get you to do what I want by manipulating you, I'm going to I'm going to tell you God said. When I can't go, I'm going to when I can't get you to do in the natural what I what I want you to do, I'm going to tell you I had a dream that God said. I, a person told me God said. Praise God. You got to be careful of those who try to tell you what God said and you haven't heard God for yourself. You want to be careful of those who try to tell you what God said and you haven't received the revelation for yourself. If God is going to speak to anybody, he's going to speak to me. If God is going to talk to anybody, he's going to talk to me. I don't need you to tell me God said because I've got God inside of me. I don't need you to give me an instruction that's going to help me because I've already got an intimate relationship with God. I've cultivated the relationship with God. I don't need your God said. I've already got God said. I don't need your God will. I've already got God will. I don't need your God will. Whatever you got in your spirit, God has already given me a revelation in my spirit. I know where I'm coming from. I know where I'm going and I know where I'm going to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the enemy will always catch you if you're unsure in what God said. You see, the Bible says that he caught Eve because he said, did God really say? Did God really say? You see, when people that get caught up in lies are people who are unsure what 
God said. Don't listen to them. Go back and hear it from God himself. Don't listen to them. Go back and check with God himself. If God said it to you, he'll say it to me. If God told you, he'll tell me. I don't need your secondhand confirmation. I don't need your secondhand gift. I don't need your secondhand voice. I've got a firsthand voice. I have an advocate with the Father. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am close relationship with him. The Bible says that the Spirit of God has been poured out upon all flesh. I can speak to him directly. The Bible says Jesus died on the cross for me to have an intimate relationship with him. I'm not having an intimate relationship with you. I'm having an intimate relationship with him. If God hasn't spoken to me, I ain't doing it. If God hasn't spoken to me, I ain't agreeing with it. If God hasn't spoken to me, I ain't taking it. If God ain't talking to me, I'm not going to receive it from you. I can't miss it. Amen. If you, because the prophet in the Old Testament, the prophet in the New Testament has not come to give me the word of God, but has come to confirm the word of God. My spirit should bear witness with the word. If my spirit don't wit bear witness with the word, I'm, not, I'm unsure about your word. If my spirit don't bear witness with the word, I'm unsure about your Holy Ghost. If my spirit don't bear witness with the word, I'm unsure about what you're, ta I'm take where you're taking me. The problem with this prophet is that in his development, he did not be certain and complete in what God said. Praise God. He was tempted once. He was tempted twice. Then he was tempted three times. On the third time, he should have rebuked the devil, like when Jesus did, amen, on the mountain. But on the third time, he took the word of the prophet, amen. And the I don't have time now. My, I've got about a couple of minutes left. And the Bible says that when the prophet heard the, took, took, the, took the boy back to his home and gave him food, amen. The Bible says the word of the Lord came on the old prophet. And the prophet said, listen, you have disobeyed the Lord. Now you are going to die. Praise God. All of a sudden, this young prophet gets killed and dies because in his development, he did not know how to kill a word, to kill a false word. Amen. To kill a lie. Amen. Praise God. You've got to be very sensitive about those who mean well, but don't mean well enough. Amen. To keep you in God's purpose that mean well but don't love you well enough to keep you in God's timing people that will convince you that God is saying do it now when God told you God told you September people will tell you that God says this is time to move when God says don't move people will tell you they say I'm also a prophet I also hear from God I don't care what you are honey you better confirm some things to me you better tell me some things you better speak some things <clears throat> if you're not confirming the truth with me amen if you're not confirming the truth I'm gonna take it as a liar I'm not going to take your title as, as who you are. I'm not going to take your reputation as who you are. You better tell me the things God told me. Because if I don't hear the things God told me, then I can't really believe it's God. See, this is what happens, amen. When you, the, lessons or, the lesson to be learned here in this man's development is that in his development, he didn't learn how to stand still and be, con and be concrete on his identity in Christ. Amen. Praise God. When you ain't sure about who you are in Christ, people can tell you God said other things. When you ain't sure about who you are in Christ, when you don't have your heart close to, close to God, people can tell you that God, God, is, God is giving you another direction. You can be led astray by every wind of doctrine. But I'm here to tell you, God is raising up a generation of people who are not afraid to listen to God's voice alone, who will not be seduced by other voices that sound similar, who will not be seduced by other things that sound similar, who will not be seduced by other words that sound similar. Listen, it may sound similar. You may have a similar sound. You may have a similar look. You may be a prophet also, but I already don't. I, I don't need a prophet to speak to me for God. I have God. I have God. Praise God. God is raising up people who are sensitive to his voice, who are sensitive to his heart. And the prophets that are they walk that walk with that heart will not just come to uh, will not just come to reveal, but they'll actually come to confirm. Amen. They'll come to release the word of God and they won't seduce you at your path because they understand the order of God and God respect where God wants you to be developed. God is saying, This is the season where I'm raising up an obedient generation of people that know me by name, of people that honor me, of people that humble themselves before me, of people that 
that will not be swayed by other voices, a people that will not be swayed by gifts, they will not be swayed by money. You see that prophet did okay for the king, he wasn't swayed by money, he did okay with the when the other the second prophet when the prophet came to him, he wasn't swayed by instruction, but he failed when the spirit starts speaking other voices. And with God is trying to raise up a generation that will not be seduced by familiar spirits, you will not be seduced by mummy water, you will not be seduced by witchcraft words, you will not be seduced by false by false saints, but you will be loyal to the voice of God and the voice of God, the words of God, you will hid, hide in your heart so you will not sin against him. This is a generation that needs to come up, amen, that are hungry for God in their development. Be steadfast and unmovable in your development. Be steadfast and immovable in your call. Hallelujah. Be steadfast and immovable in your ministry. Be steadfast and immovable in the things of God. Hallelujah. Power is coming upon you right now. Hallelujah. To be steadfast. Some people have tried to pull you out of your destiny. Be steadfast. Some people have tried to tell you God is saying do this in this season. Be steadfast. Some people have tried to give you false instruction in this season. Be steadfast. There's people have tried to tell you it's God but it's really their flesh. Be steadfast. This is the season for the children of God to raise up with power and authority. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Listen, children of God, I've got about two minutes here. Amen. I want to be obedient. They gave me from nine to ten. Amen. I'm going to be on this platform every week from nine to ten. This is HOD Gospel Radio Network. Amen. If this message has been a blessing to you, share it. Some, set someone free. Amen. Amen. Help somebody. It's called, we call it today development. Amen. Praise God. That prophet died in his development. He died doing, do, he died on the way. He wasn't killed by an enemy. He was killed by a friend. You got to what the Bible, you got to be careful of those friends that are well meaning but are going to lead you to the ways of death. You got to be careful of those friends that say the right, that say, pretend to say the right things, but whatever they're saying is leading you astray. Praise God. That's what happened to this guy. That's what happened to this guy. It wasn't an enemy. It was a fellow prophet that gave him a word that led him astray. You got to be careful that people that mean well do not honor you. Listen, if you were blessed by today, I want to encourage you to sow a seed. Amen. Praise God. If you want to sow a seed, it's pound sign. Pound sign socks ministries amen on cash app amen you can sow a seed amen praise god the giving information is here praise the lord amen you see the giving information if you want to bless our ministry amen and you want to sow a seed into this platform we ask you if you can amen to release a seed to bless somebody if you if this has blessed you amen and i want to encourage you amen that this is the season for God's people to raise up with power and authority. This is a season for us to be clear and be consistent with one voice, one sound, one appearance. This is Apostle Moses Rankin. This is Sword of the Spirit Ministries. This is prophetic insight. Amen. I want to bless you and release you now. Shalom. Blessings to you. We're back again on my ministry channel, which is Sword of the Spirit International Prophetic Ministry, Sword of the Spirit Prophetic Ministries on Facebook. Amen. With our 11.30 service tomorrow. God bless you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.